In today's Leeds news, Hull want Gellhart, Southampton eye Creswell, Paveda makes Columbia debut, Harrison hints at permanent move, and Burnley plan Somerville bid. Morning folks, Jay here, Monday morning the 11th of December with your Leeds United news. Another good result for Leeds at the weekend. Big game tomorrow against Sunderland to try and see if Leeds can add another three points after a very impressive win. A very professional win is what it should be described as on Saturday by Daniel Fark. His men, a really, really good performance defensively and attack, attacking as well. Um, did everything they needed to do against a pretty decent Blackburn side. I quite enjoyed watching Blackburn play, actually. Um, interesting to watch another side and actually enjoy watching them play. Uh, Tomlinson plays a nice brand of football, but unfortunately doesn't have the bodies, unfortunately, to compete. Um, it was great to see Leeds get three points. I would love to know everyone's thoughts on the game over the weekend. Did you think it was as professional as performance, or was it a case of what Tomlinson said? Is it a case that Leeds just have Premier League players and a better squad, and that's the only reason? I don't think that's the only reason. But uh, We'll crack on with into this. We'll start off with news. There's a lot of exit stuff here today. A lot of it. I can't see it happening. Some of it I can. Um, but we'll get into it in detail. We'll start off with the talk around Joe Gellhart. And according to The Sun and The Sun on Sunday, Hull City are labelled as a club that are very interested in bringing Joe Gellhart into their ranks in January. Gellhart has had little to no minutes this season for Leeds United in the first team, although had a few games at the very, very beginning of the season. But in the most recent ones, has fallen down the pecking order and failed to make the bench on a couple of occasions as well. The Sun report that Lemur Senior is looking at Joe Gellhart as a possible option to try and bolster their striking options into the second half of the season. It's also labelled in the report that Huddersfield Town's Darren Moore is an admirer of Gellhart as well and would also be keen on bringing him to Huddersfield. The report also moves on to say that the, the wages that Joe Gellhart is on may be a stumbling block for certain clubs to be able to afford, but there will be some form of a split potentially if that is agreed. However, the Athletic had reported um, a couple of weeks ago that as far as they were concerned Daniel Farkett wanted Joe Gellhart to remain at Leeds United as he is part of the first team squad albeit not getting a huge amount of minutes but that will depend I suppose on whether the player is happy to sit on the bench and in the stands and watch football and not play a huge amount of minutes at, a, at an important age for the player as well um, the, the report then goes on to say that Leeds would want some guarantees over playing time as well should it be a case that they agree to let Gellhart go out on loan this would be on the back of the situation involving Sonny Perkins at Oxford where he's played little to no minutes at all this season and um, sitting in the stands watching Oxford playing. So Leeds would probably look to get some guaranteed minutes in the deal should they let him go. But if Gellhart was to go to Huddersfield or Hull, you'd expect him to be in the starting lineup anyway. So that's that one there. <clears throat> Let's move on. Let's talk about another young player who may be looking at a January loan exit and that's Charlie Creswell. According to the Athletic, Daniel Farkin made it clear that he also wants Charlie Creswell to remain at Leeds for the second half of the season. But again, they said they're back, who's not getting a huge amount of minutes and has seen Leeds play other players there or remove players that out of position in that back line in order to facilitate replacements of centre-backs rather than bring him into the mix himself. Um, in the report on this one, particularly, it says that Hampton are very, very interested in bringing in Charlie Creswell to their lineup as well, to line up alongside Taylor Bellis, who they believe will be from a centre-back partnership that will help them to get promoted this season. It's incredibly unlikely that Leeds would loan out a player to Southampton, who are very much a promotion rival. Um, it also states that Middlesbrough are also very interested in Charlie Creswell as well. That goes back a couple of weeks as well. they got some interest in it as well. So we'll see what happens in the next two or three weeks, whether there's moves made on these players or not. But it's a situation where these are two young players at Leeds have. Two players who still have a lot of potential to, to make it at Leeds and to become good players and top players. Creswell specifically. Um, Gellert's had a bit of a bad time of it and just probably needs a run of games and a bit of confidence to get him back to where he was two years ago when he was breaking into the Leeds team in the Premier League. So... Um, interesting to see what they do. They do need games. For me, I wouldn't have an issue loaning them out, but I think if Leeds are going to loan out, especially Creswell, they need to bring in reinforcements at centre back as well. But that's that's the only one for me. I'd like to see them stay, but if they're not playing, I can see them going out and getting loan minutes. It's it'll benefit us down the road in the long run, one way or the other. And um, moving on to some good news, Ian Paveda, who was called up by the Colombian national B team last week, has in fact made his Colombian debut. The player pl started and played 80 minutes in Colombia's 1-0 win over Venezuela at the weekend. Uh, decent game for Paveda by all accounts as well, so a massive congrats to Ian Paveda on making his Colombian debut. 
Moving on, let's talk about other players out on loan at the moment and talking about their futures. And let's talk about Jack Harrison. We haven't spoken a huge amount about Jack's time away from Leeds outside of loan watch and what his plans are. But he has been speaking to the media recently and has hinted that a permanent move to Everton could be on the cards depending on certain circumstances. Harrison has said that he will review his options at the end of this season and is focused on a successful season with Everton. Harrison also went on to say that he doesn't believe Everton will be in a relegation mix this season. Um, and also on the report, it states that the Toffees, if they were to stay up, Sean Dyke would be very keen on making Jack Harrison's move permanent to Everton. According to <clears throat> Team Talk, Harrison has a £20 million buyout option in his current deal. That should Everton decide to bring the player in, they can they can activate that at any point throughout the season, should they decide to bring the player in a permanent, to permanent deal. He's had some interesting performances, he's had some good games, he's got a couple of assists, he has been criticised by the local media as well at times as well, so it's 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 been a weird time for Jack, it's not being plain sailing, but he has produced some assists as he tends to do, coming into Jack's tricky point of the season where he tends to, um, performances tend to get a little bit inconsistent over the winter months of the year, but he's doing reasonably well there so far, is talking about a potential permanent move and hasn't ruled out a chance of moving to Everton on a permanent basis should they stay up. And should he want to do that? But it is also pointed out in this report that all depends really on what Leeds United want as well. Because if Leeds get promoted, Leeds might want Jack Harrison back. I, I made my opinions on this clear. Jack Harrison doesn't get a boy because he's Jack Harrison has history with Leeds. They all walked off and they all left Leeds. They all left Leeds when instead of sticking around and helping the club, every single one of them, they're on the same boat. So um, I'm not overly keen on seeing Jackie back in the Leeds. But that's just my personal opinion. And if you don't agree on opinions, that's also fine. If people want to see Jackie back, that that's that's your your take on it, and that's absolutely fine. Uh, and then finally today, moving on, there's a uh, rumor bubbling around a potential bid for Cree Somerville coming in January. This is on the back of Fabrizio Romano confirming that Burnley did make a twenty million pound offer for Cree Somerville in the summer that was rejected by Leeds United. Somerville wanted to stay at Leeds. Leeds wanted him to stay. He's been a massive part of what Leeds have done so far this season. Scoring again at the weekend. He is having an incredible season. Romano, though, has however has added more fuel to the fire, stating that Burnley will make another move to try and buy Cree Somerville in the January transfer window. Somerville's contract expires in the summer of 2026, so really this is up to what the 49ers and Leeds want to do. It's very unlikely that they will accept any bids for their major players. Leeds are not in a situation where they need to raise funds or cash. Leeds have plenty of money in the bank if they need to go spend it. They can go spend it. They're not in danger with financial fair player profit and sustainability rules either, so they're in the clear on that as well. And it's incredibly unlikely that Leeds would, would sanction any form of a move of key players that are likely to push Leeds into promotion. Challenging, unless it, it states itself unless the players themselves look to force moves away from the club which increased some of his situation is highly unlikely given the season that he is having so far the company has said to want to sign a couple of players to ignite Burnley's survival hopes for in the Premier League this season and Chris Somerville has said one of the players high on his list of players to bring in and on the back of the season he's having you can't argue with a lot of clubs in the lower half of the table would definitely be keeping an eye on Chris Somerville like we did last year with Guy Krish, so at Coventry so and, Hammer, and Hamer as well that's going on now but in the financial situation that Leeds are, they're not Coventry. There's plenty of money there. Leeds should be in a position where they can hang on to the player if they should need to. Uh, that's going to be it for me today, folks. Massive thanks, as always, for supporting the channel. I will see you back here tomorrow morning for more Leeds news. Have a great day. See you. Bye.